Thank you, Eric, for the kind introduction. And thank you, everyone, for allowing me to present to you today. As Eric mentioned, my name is Stephen Olson. I'm Vice President of Product Development for Greensight here in Boston, Massachusetts. Before I joined Greensight, I worked in the golf course industry for 15 years in various roles. Now, working at Greensight, we've been helping golf and professional sports turf managers around the world to proactively manage their turf and their teams with a suite of digital transformation tools made specifically for the turf manager, featuring a powerful, fully automated drone intelligence platform. We send drones to you. We operate them remotely so you don't have to. We analyze your entire property in a single daily flight and then deliver you actionable data in under two hours that's accessible from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. The topic of discussion today is how collecting data with exciting new and emerging technologies can help you be a more effective manager, grow healthier turf, and reduce your environmental impact. I think it's important to recognize that while we can probably all agree that collecting and analyzing data from things like moisture sensors, weather stations, or any other technologies you may use is important, in no way is managing golf or professional sports turf a paint by numbers exercise. There is no question that managing turf takes a bit of artistry. Golf course superintendents and sports turf managers are already very in tune with their turf. We spend so much time and put so much energy into keeping the turf healthy and properly conditioned that it can feel like it's one of our actual children. We do our best to care for it and anticipate its needs. And for the most part, we're successful at it. So. As a golf course superintendent or professional sports turf manager, the question becomes, what can a soil sensor, a drone, or an autonomous mower tell me about my turf that I don't already know? Well, depending on your outlook, the answer to this question could be quite simple or it could be quite complex. Let's take one of my past experiences as an example. Have you ever had a boss that was just so stubborn, set in their ways, in my first job as an assistant golf course superintendent, this perfectly described my boss, Neil. I was young, fresh out of turf grass school, and I had my own ideas on how we could make the golf course better. I, I felt so strongly that we could make changes to our golf course maintenance practices that would benefit us, that I couldn't really understand why he was so unreceptive to change. And to make matters worse, the data and documentation that he made us all manually collect was endless. Neil had enough three ring binders full of documentation to fill an entire library from handwritten spreadsheets of daily employee task assignments, detailed budget information, you name it, he tracked it with pen and paper. I once attended a presentation where the speaker started off with the statement that data equals knowledge equals power. Neil definitely wielded his impressive collection of data and documentation as a source of power to settle any arguments between he and I. Whenever his bosses came into the office and said, Neil, you're over budget this month, what happened? He'd take one of his three ring binders full of data off the shelf, slam it on his desk and say, have a seat. I have all the data in here to support what I've done. Let's review it together. In those moments, Neil was the most powerful person in the room. He had quantitative, irrefutable data to back up and justify any decision he made in the golf course. It was at that point that I started to realize the tremendous value of data collection and documentation. I also realized that data can serve different purposes for different people. For Neil, he was perfectly happy with his maintenance plan. He didn't want to use data to change what he was doing. He wanted to use it to support what he was doing. I, on the other hand, wanted to gather new types of data that can help make my job easier and help us be more environmentally responsible. But still, both of our reasons for wanting data were perfectly justifiable and valid. The first time I can remember Neil having a lack of data to support his actions was when his boss came to him with a complaint that he had trouble refuting. The golfers were complaining that Neil was watering too much. The greens were too wet. Neil pulled out one of his famous three ring binders and started going through weather reports and irrigation totals. But his boss kept asking, how, how do you know for certain how much water the grass really needs? Neil 
could explain that he was justified in thinking the grass needed some water, but he couldn't justify how he knew he was being as conservative with it as possible. To solve this, we ended up purchasing a handheld moisture meter. We started to take moisture meter readings daily across all the greens and adjusted our irrigation run times accordingly to maintain a consistent level of moisture in the soil. The way I see it, the moisture meter was a win for everyone at the golf course. Neil now had data that he could justify how much water he was using. I was able to reduce our irrigation water consumption and the golfers stopped complaining that the golf course was too wet. So if we pose the question again of what can a drone, a soil sensor, or a robotic mower tell me about my turf that I don't already know, the question becomes more clear. Data collection and analysis is not always about telling you something you don't already know. It's about providing you with more in-depth information that will help you refine your approach, give you early insights into potential problems, be even more confident in the actions you take, and have those actions be defensible with irrefutable, instantly accessible data. Aside from these more qualitative benefits, the quantitative benefits that our GreenSight customers are seeing are astounding. They're making tangible reductions in management costs and reducing their environmental impact, all while improving the quality of their turf. Take, for example, Kevin Hauschel, golf course superintendent at the Meadow Club in Fairfax, California. Kevin manages turf at the highest level in one of the most resource expensive locations in all of the United States. The cost of labor, fuel, irrigation, and water alone can be nearly double the national average. Kevin has been using our drone intelligence platform for a little over three years now. Even before he started using it, because of the cost of operating in California, Kevin was already aware of his need to be conservative with his irrigation water usage. He was employing three full-time employees dedicated to irrigating the golf course. These employees spent their entire day collecting hundreds of soil moisture meter readings throughout the golf course, hand watering areas of concern, and then using the soil moisture data to adjust their nightly irrigation. At the time, even with the benefit of soil moisture data, Kevin was choosing to irrigate only around 75% of his rough areas and 80% of his fairways to save money on irrigation water. But now, utilizing high resolution RGB, FBI plant health, and thermal imagery gathered with the GreenSight drone, in conjunction with the soil moisture sensors, Kevin had a much more complete and clear picture of the areas of the golf course that he could dial back his irrigation water and his fertilizer usage. Kevin was then able to reapply these savings to other areas of the golf course that were previously going unwatered or unfertilized. He could now cover roughly 28% more area with the same amount of irrigation water that he was previously using. In total, he decreased his per acre water usage by nearly 10%. This resulted in a reduction of about 10 million gallons of irrigation water applied for the year, all while improving the quality of his golf course as a whole. By incorporating GreenSight into his maintenance practices, Kevin was also able to become more efficient in other areas as well. He began to feel so much confidence in the analytics he was getting with GreenSight that he was able to reduce the amount of employees that were dedicated to hand watering from, two, from three employees to two employees. He was also able to reduce his mowing frequencies by keeping the turf more lean through more targeted and better timed fertilizer and plant growth regulator applications. Reductions in staff, water usage, fertilizer, and agrochemicals don't just save money, they also have a positive impact on the environment. Start Given a 10% reduction in water usage by using GreenSight, Kevin reduced his carbon emissions attributed to pumping irrigation water by 5.5 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent for the year. This is the equivalent of taking nearly three cars off the road for the year. Just by being more efficient with his water in terms of carbon emissions, it's almost like Kevin and two of his assistants decide to trade their cars in for bicycles. This is quite impressive when you think about it. Even more impressive are the carbon emissions reductions that resulted from reduced mowing frequencies. Rather than mowing fairways ten, uh, three times a week, by keeping the turf more lean, Kevin was able to remove one fairway cut per week from his maintenance program. 
resulted in a 50% reduction in carbon emissions from fairway mowing. Now, in conjunction with his irrigation water savings, in terms of carbon emissions, it's like Kevin, two of his assistants, and two more of his ground staff members all traded their cars in for bicycles. It's pretty impressive stuff. To give a glimpse into the future of what's to come, without even examining the obvious labor savings and quality improvements, what would it mean for the environment if Kevin switched to fully electric Husqvarna robotic mowers, tightly integrated with his GreenSight platform and soil sensors to mow large areas of rough and fairways on his golf course? If he were to simply replace three cuts per week that he's doing with large diesel fuel powered mowers to cutting with a handful of Husqvarna robotic mowers, he would reduce his carbon emissions for mowing these areas by 99%. Now, in conjunction with his water savings, in terms of carbon emissions, this would be like Kevin and his entire staff and some of his golfers trading all of their cars in for bicycles. And this is only one golf course. If 10% of the golf courses in the United States alone were to adopt their similar plan as Kevin, the reduced carbon emissions would be like removing roughly 17,000 cars from the road. If we could even convince 10% of the golf courses globally, it would be like removing 38,000 cars from the road. And the numbers scale up from there. When the usage of advanced analytics and robotics become commonplace in golf and professional sports turf, the environmental impact will be astounding. And with that, I'll pass the event back, back over to Eric. I thank you all for your time, and I hope that in the future, you'll all decide to embrace new technology and let the data it provides help you improve your turf and the world around it.